K20 RBC intake manifold onto H22. They said it's not worth the effort because of the price tag. You could just simply buy a Skunk 2 and Euro R intake manifold and you will get the same amount of horsepower or uh, torque, same results as this one. But this is kind of different, kind of unique. This is what I have envisioned. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Well, it's about time to show to you guys what I have here. This is what I've been cooking all along that I tell you that I can't show it to you guys yet. Not until it make a result. I was going to wait till it goes to a dyno session or anything like that. But I just, I make this vlog so you guys could see it. Well, today's episode is about this RBC intake manifold that I, uh, that I cut up and weld it into an H22 head flange. Well, let me explain why I do things that I do. What I have envisioned was an RBC intake manifold without the adapter and also without modifying the rear T bracket, which is exactly what I did here. Yeah, I got plenty of clearance here for the T bracket. That's about an inch and a half, I think. But the uh, thermostat housing, as far as the thermo switch, I'm just simp I'm just simply going to uh, relocate that pointing up. But I could not bring this up anymore, tilt it as much, so I don't have to do anything on the uh, thermostat housing. It's because of the fuel nozzle. Uh, the more I tilt it up, I'm losing the uh, clearance for the fuel rail. That explains why I have this big uh, weld right here. I'm not a welder, by the way. I'm just doing this so I can accomplish what I have envisioned. That little extension was, it happened to be the same flange that I cut off from this intake manifold from RBC. So why I did that, it's to extend it out. That way I would have more clearance for the uh, fuel injectors and the fuel rail. And by doing that also, the runners, it comes up, then goes down, so it doesn't have that sharp turn for the air uh, flow. That way it would have some kind of uh, a cavity in there, a contour inside. So it will have an easy uh, airflow pat pattern inside. yeah I, I have to try it and there it is i finally done it so the only thing left would be to try it out to test it out hopefully this will uh, gain some horsepower or at least some torque like what it was before but as far as like the measurement right there i have added i think about an inch length onto the runner so uh, we'll see we shall see yeah it's not bad of a project not bad of a project and the bottom part i cut the gusset i i might extend that up to here but we'll see maybe uh the support that I could put on here maybe that's good enough so there it is <laughs> K20 RBC intake manifold that's using without the adapter right on thanks for watching guys I'll see you guys back hopefully you like this episode right there. Well, this project is only for uh, <laughs> research and development. No, really. Well, I have the uh, H22 intake manifold right there. And this is the RBC. And everyone knows that if this is uh, used for uh, H22 swap, it tends to lean downwards and 
it creates some uh, interference on the rear T bracket right about here so um, my intention is I don't want to use the, uh, the adapter plate and also I wanted to bring this up a little so it will tilt up like so at least that's my plan so what I'm thinking of is well I did a rough estimate as far as like the alignment on all the runners and they all lined up so I'm gonna cut it here right here that way I don't I'm gonna use this the flange right about here then I'm gonna cut this all the way to the uh, flange right here yeah and then I'm going to as I go so maybe cut this in an angle will be a lot of grinding but uh, so if it's seated like that so I need I need but right there if I can have this thing all leveled up but we'll see man it's a very expensive project <laughs> I don't care uh, <laughs> if it works it works if not oh well yeah you'll man okay I'm gonna cut that off not to worry no animals will be harmed on doing this only my ego all right well here it is if it don't work out i can always use this on the turbocharged engine and force induction there you go <laughs> all right right on man cool man it's looking good already maybe it's just welded like this huh man it might not be a bad idea <laughs> all right can you guys see the difference The top of this right here it's almost lined up to the top of the cylinder head and the angle and you see the flange and the angle so if I use an adapter it's gonna be like this so that manifold is gonna be pointing down and with that thing extend with that cut off flange there sitting flat like that and look at the angle yeah okay Whew, it's getting tight all right I think uh, I'm thinking of just hog this thing off right here entirely man I think uh, rather than cut it off yeah I think it'll be best if I use this flange well good progress and bad news yeah the first idea was to uh, keep this flange so it'll be a lot easier to uh, to weld and also I would have more room to grind it to uh, port the uh, the misalignment of the runners and also if I keep it like this 
as is it's a little bit too long uh, I'm measuring That's 11 inches all the way around and I measured my Euro R intake manifold and that thing is like on a 9 inches or 10 and uh, so I don't want to go too far I know the uh, Accords got a lot of uh, room for intake manifold and all but uh, I'm gonna end up losing this I'm gonna chop this off the flange itself and what's going to happen is this material right here it's almost like the uh the sum of the uh the adapter and the two uh thermal uh seal gasket yeah if i do that i think it's also it will be better and that will push me to about yeah just about 10 inches yeah so that's the uh that's the deal i'm gonna have to uh cut this flange and also by doing that it it also it will align the runners uh, a little bit better but man it'll be interesting when i would get done with this thing <laughs> I gotta go to uh, Harbor Freight and buy me some uh, cutting up uh, blade so I can cut it off. Interesting. Put some uh, dicom on them. Now I have to make sure everything is flat. As you can see, the high spot, the blue marks are gone. And then the lowest spot will be the one with the blue uh, paint still, all blue marks, or Prussian blue, they call it. Very tedious work. Well, that's the idea. I'm just gonna keep filing it till I don't see those marks anymore. Let's see how it goes. I'm not a welder, guys. Uh, the purpose of this uh, modification is the runners to uh, go up a little that way it doesn't have a uh, sharp turn they said it's not worth the effort because of the price tag <laughs> 